whatever we want to talk about, we're going to talk about it. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of E4 Explosive Podcast. I'm Corey, and this is Anthony Davis, uh, a professor, and I will let you kind of tell me your your background. I'm Associate Professor of Economics at Duquesne University and the Milton Friedman Distinguished Scholar at the Foundation for Economic Education. Let's talk about gun control. Let's talk about guns, right? Yeah, let's talk about guns. <laughs> we're in like, we're in the middle of Virginia, right? That's so, right. Yeah. Virginia's pretty gun friendly. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rep- my colleague James Harrigan and I write um, an op-ed a month for papers throughout the country, and uh, we make it a point to avoid talking about guns anytime we're close to some national gun tragedy, sure. because yeah. you know people people are driving by emotion rather than logic. Yeah, but but it's worth thinking about a little bit. Um, one of the things that people are largely unaware of is that the CDC commissioned a study just a few years ago, and by a few, I mean maybe five years ago, asking the question, how much defensive gun use is there? In other words, in how many instances per year does somebody use a gun to prevent what would either be violence upon them or or even their death, right? And as you can imagine, the numbers are very hard to come by. So you get this this range, uh, a huge range, from something on the order of 50,000 a year up to a million a year, something like that. But what's noteworthy is, in in this study that the CDC commissioned, looks at a whole bunch of studies by um, people who have have looked at this thing, and and it shows all the, the range of numbers. At the low end, in the worst case scenario, the number of defensive gun uses in this country equals the number of offensive uses, which indicates that if we could wave a magic wand and and get rid of all the guns tomorrow, um, the people who are going to use guns illegally are going to find them anyway. Yes. And all you've done is you've disarmed the people who would defend themselves. So yeah. it, at the end, you're you're no better off than you were before. That's a, the, that's in the worst case scenario. In the best case scenario, um, you know, the number of defensive gun uses far outweighs to like ten times the number of offensive uses. Now, one of the things that that people will point to is compare the United States to other countries and number of guns and number of uh, gun fatalities, <clears throat> and you have to be very careful about these numbers. Firstly, the numbers, if the numbers aren't on a per capita basis, they have no meaning. Sure. So, for example, yes, we have a lot of gun deaths in this country compared to, you know, pick some other country, uh, the UK. Okay, but we have a much larger population than yes. the UK. So you would expect. Right? Of course. So you have to look at the thing on a per capita basis. The, the other thing that you have to be very careful of is what matters isn't, mass shootings that is it doesn't matter that five people were killed at once if five people were killed whether they were killed at once or in different places or over the course of a week what i care is that five people were killed yeah so mass shootings as opposed to shootings doesn't matter that much um more than that firearm deaths compared to deaths in my opinion don't matter that much what i really care about is how many times has somebody killed somebody else that's what Period. bothers me, period. Yeah. I don't care whether you used a gun or a knife or, or a shoe. Sure. If you killed somebody, that's a problem. Yep. Now, if you look at the numbers for the United States, number of intentional homicides per capita uh, compared to the amount of guns we have, and you do that for all the countries, what you find is the United States is not an outlier all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, you know, it's because the amount of guns that we do right. have. Right, we we have a tremendous number of guns. Over 400 yeah. million, yeah. But the number of intentional homicides per capita is not out of the ordinary. Yes, that makes total sense, actually. And that's not to say, again, it's not to say that the, the homicides don't matter. It is to say that if you really care about stopping people from killing other people, as opposed to using the killings as an excuse to confiscate guns. If you really care about people killing people, that, then you should be looking at intentional homicides and you should be asking the question, well, if they aren't correlated with gun gun ownership, sure. what are they correlated with? And go after that thing. No, you're right. I, I was I, I had this conversation. Well, it wasn't a conversation. It was a, um, and I totally agree with you because I think it's like you think about if you did take all the guns away, 
when's the last time you saw someone like in a gang or a gangbanger go to a gun store, buy a gun that they know they're going to go right. commit a murder with? Probably never. So all of the, they're going to, if, if somebody wants to do harm to someone, they're going to find a way, whether it's a car, a knife. Oh, or, sure. It doesn't matter. So uh, I actually, I had a friend of mine make a post on Facebook and I never comment. I never comment on stuff because I, I don't like to go back and forth. And it was like, um, America has a, uh, a problem with white uh, terrorists like mm. or white domestic terrorism and I'm like okay well so factually I, I just didn't think that was accurate because the the vast majority of mass shooters especially in 2019 are not all white because mass shootings I think they uh, clarify or, or define it as like three or more casualties in a public place yeah not including the perpetrator yeah it depends there are several definitions but yeah, yeah I think yeah. the FBI definition is three or maybe four yeah, yeah. it's like three yeah. or four um so it, it just like it really kind of was like well my main goal was to like we don't don't do this like race thing or whatever it's like if someone killed someone that's a problem. That pro exactly. Right. Regardless of who did it, how they did it, whatever. Um, and then so a, a female chimed in, and I didn't know who she was, and then she started dropping words like uh, neo-Nazi and she, you know, my white privilege and all these things. And I was like, let me think about it. So I could totally drop some facts and knowledge on her, mm -hmm. and, but I didn't want to go back and forth. So I instead extended a, to come on my podcast um, and was like, you know, let's, you don't know my background. You don't, you don't know my mm -hmm. history. You're just seeing my profile picture, right. have no clue what I've been through or anything. So anyway, so my point though is um, the, it's not the guns per se, but like, I think social media has a major, major, uh, play and how we have this conversation yeah. because it's it's you see mass shootings and you you just everyone goes up in arms it's like they're making it sound like oh it's it happens it's more frequent than ever and it, it, we act like people's never had no one's ever been murdered by guns before like, yeah yeah and, and here it, it's interesting to look at the numbers because what People say we have an epidemic of gun violence. Yes. We, we don't have an epidemic of gun violence. We have an epidemic of the reporting of gun violence. Yes. And you see it on the news. And of course you see it on the news because what are they doing? Their goal is to sell eyeballs. Yeah. They want to sell advertise if they can get you to watch the thing. Yep. So they're going to repeat all the bad news. What you don't see is the good news. Good yeah. news doesn't sell. Of course not. But if you step back and look at the numbers, and you can find this uh, from the Bureau of Justice Statistics, the number of homicides, uh, excuse me, firearm homicides. So forget about homicides. This is homicide by gun in the U.S. is down 50%, 50 percent, five zero, fifty 50% since the 1990s. Yeah. And further, the number of crimes committed with a gun, whether the person's killed or not, that's down 80%. Yes. So the gun crimes and, and gun violence are declining precipitously in this country. Are there exceptions? Sure, there are exceptions. But generally speaking, it's declining. And one of the problems we have, I think we have two problems. One problem is, I blame on the media, not just the social media, but the mainstream media, 100%. of refusing to speak clearly. So the media will say things like, we should ban assault weapons. Well, assault weapon has no definition. Yeah. So, so what you get immediately is two sides. The control people think that the pro-gun people are just splitting hairs yep. because we say, well, you know, assault weapon, what does this mean? It's yeah. cosmetic, this and that. And so the pro-control people think that the pro-gun people are trying to obfuscate by, by you know, not engaging. We're going to split hairs on sure. definitions. But conversely, the pro-gun people think that the pro-control people want to ban everything. Yes. Because they're using terms that have no clear definition. That are so broad. And therefore, yeah, could be applied to anything. Exactly. That and makes so, sense. And so I think the, the first step to having a, a fruitful conversation in this country about gun control is let's all pledge to get the terms right. So yeah. semi-automatic has a particular meaning. Um, assault weapon doesn't have any meaning. There is an assault rifle that does have a meaning, right? Yes. So yeah, it takes a little bit of time, but I think with 10 minutes with Google, we can figure this yeah, out. Yeah. And so we can use the right terms and have a conversation. And I think the next step, once we, we can now communicate clearly, is that each side has to give the other the benefit of the doubt. Sure. That just because you like guns and I don't, it doesn't mean you're evil. It doesn't mean I'm evil. Yeah. It means we're concerned about something. And I think we can find middle ground. And one of the interesting places to find some middle ground, I think, is in the combination of mental illness in guns. Um, 
I think probably everybody could agree that someone with a mental illness shouldn't own a gun. Is that a Second Amendment violation? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. But we violate all sorts, and the Supreme Court holds upholds violations of all sorts of rights yes. under certain circumstances. To protect the public. Under certain yeah, circumstances, yeah. Um, now, that's fraught with all kinds of difficulties of how do we define mental illness, who does the defining. But notice what happens. If we can, if we can first agree on the terminology so that we can communicate, yeah. and second, assume goodwill on each other's parts, we can now for the first time start to have this conversation. And is it going to be easy to figure out how do we keep hands out of the mentally ill? No, it's not. No. But at least we've got the groundwork that we can begin to try and work in that direction. No, you're a hundred you, right on the head because I, two things, one that I've seen as far as the argument or the, the, the conversation that people try to have is um, as a pro gun person, I think that it's, it's very much like the terminology is totally off. And then I don't think that uh, more regulation or whatever means complete confiscation. I don't mm -hmm. believe that. Right. But a lot of people that are pro-gun think that because, like you just said, the terminology is completely off. It's too broad. Yeah. It's way yeah. too broad. Yeah. So they think they just want to pull in Australia and do a whole you know, yeah. mandatory yeah. buyback. But I don't think that's the case either. And then. As far as you hit it right on the dot too, the the gun homicide or the gun violence and the homicides are the numbers you should look at because most people that have an argument that are anti-gun talk about uh, gun was a gun violence in general, yeah, or whatever. Right. And it's like, or no, 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 not gun violence, just just gun deaths, mm -hmm. yeah, which Majority includes suicide or suicide, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's my point. Is like, like you got to get your facts, like. Like, make sure we're all talking about the same thing at the same yeah. time. Yeah, and, and this is this is important to underline. The suicides, I believe, are somewhere around two-thirds to three-quarters yes. of all of gun deaths. Yes, it's like 70-some percent. So, yeah, it's the insane. vast majority of gun deaths are people killing themselves. Exactly, yeah. So, you know, whether that's that's a part of the mental illness, why should mm -hmm. they? It, it, that's irrelevant, but, like, that's my point is, like, the majority of, like, we need to specifically talk about one thing, and that's gun homicide, gun violence right. on someone else. Else. Right, right. Not myself, right. because that is a huge amount of people when it comes to suicide. That's actually like I like perfectly. I, that's I wish everyone could kind of have that conversation. And I'm not like excited because like whether you're pro gun, I'm pro. Mm -hmm. It's not even like that. It's like terminology has to be on point because you're right. If you're talking about an assault assault ban or assault rifle, it's like what gun are you talking about? Like the AR-15. Like there's no there's no way to get a fully automatic weapon. Right. Like it's like right. it's determined, and the media is a is a huge part of that. And I just it sucks mm -hmm. because I don't know how or what's gonna happen. You know what I mean? Like I don't know how we can have that conversation when you have people not knowing the terminology and thinking one way that are, you know, one minded in one way, and then the, the right as well, thinking they're just gonna like take all of their guns and it's right. just, you know, so that's what your thing is to focus on like the actual details, have that yeah. conversation, know the terminology and, and, and assume goodwill on the part of the person you're talking to. Yeah. That you're both looking to solve a serious problem. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Australia and that's worth, um, <laughs> noting in passing. Yes. Of course, Australia, whenever it was 1996, thereabouts, uh, banned, they can't actually more than ban. They confiscated, and I don't know if it was all firearms or long guns in particular. Mandatory buyback. Man mandatory buyback. Yeah. And if you look at the numbers, what you find is in the four years after that, the number of gun homicides drops. Drops. But the number of knife homicides rises it's like in right? almost the, almost yeah. the same rate and yep. so you know, all you're doing is you're back to the thing of you're switching what it is you're committing the crime yes. with. Yes, it's like like in England, they had like. I think it was like 33,000 uh, knife attacks. Knife right. attacks. Yeah. And it's like, like you said, just like, just like with the drug thing, if somebody, the cartels, if somebody wants to do something, they will find a way yeah. to do it. Like they say, oh, well, are we going to ban cars? Because cars kill more people right. every year than guns or anything, really. Yeah. You know? And w I think when it comes to killing other people, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, if I'm intent on killing somebody, you take away my gun, I'm going to find something else. Exactly. I'll find a way to kill the person. The, the place where it makes a difference, this goes back to the issue of mental health, is in suicide. Because in suicide, the gun is is something that will, with which I can kill myself 
quickly, definitively. Yes. And there's no opportunity to turn back and say, ah, I don't think I'll do this. Yeah. You know, for example, as an alternative, I'm going to lock myself with a running car in my garage. You think about it. I have got time to think about it. Yeah. 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 And so from that perspective, um, I'll admit quite rightly that guns are are a problem when combined with people who are suicidal. It makes it way too easy. It does. You know what? You hit on a, a really uh, close point, actually. My, uh, I had a really good friend this past this year uh, commit suicide, mm-hmm. and I had a, um, another friend of mine, Rocco Kazaza. He's on the podcast a lot. We had a, he, he said, because my friend who committed suicide was a big gun person, so I thought when I heard that he killed himself that he used a gun, and I'm mm-hmm. like, Oh man, like that must have been, in, you know, crazy yeah. or whatever. He actually hung himself. Mm. Uh, he's a two hundred and plus pound big dude. His grandpa found him. It was very, very like I could, I couldn't even imagine. But I'm thinking like a gun, like you said, is like quick and right. over. But like when you're tying up a rope, you've got a lot of time to think about time. it. Like yeah. that, that even to me, even is you got a lot more going on mm-hmm. versus like, Oh, I had a bad week. Let me just end it real quick. You know what I mean? So yeah. I don't know if like how, how though, cause I know you can't really look into someone's mental illness. Right. Mm. As far as like legally, right. Like I, I can't look into someone's if they've had mental health issues to ban them from getting guns. So how is that? How do we even, yeah. See, and, and this is exactly the conversation that the left and the right should be having. Got it. And, and it is difficult and I don't know what the answer is, but we're never going to find the answer if there is one yes. until we sit down and start having that conversation, assuming goodwill on both parts. Of course. 